Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting functional system. We have f of x plus f inverse of x equals 2x and f of f of x plus f of x equals 2x plus 15. And we're going to be solving for f of x. We're going to try to find an expression for f of x. And this problem has been inspired by an APMO problem. APMO is the Asian Pacific Math Olympiad. So let's see how we can approach this problem. We're going to talk about some generals and then we're going to talk about some specifics. So first of all, in the first equation, I think it would make sense if I copied it one more time because I'm going to substitute something. So this is the first equation. I consider the top one to be the first equation and the bottom one to be the second. In the first equation, I'm going to replace x with f of x. And there's a good reason behind that. When I do it, I'm going to be getting f inverse composition f, which is the identity function, which is going to give us x at the end. So replace x with f of x, you're going to get f of f of x plus f inverse of f of x equals 2 times f of x. Be careful, a lot of times people forget to replace x with whatever it is on both sides, you have to do it completely. Now notice that f inverse of f of x, these, will, these two will undo each other and leaving us with just x. So this gives us another equation. We can kind of write this as f of f of x plus x just by, by itself equals f of x. So that kind of gives us f of f of x in terms of f of x, which we can compose again. But combine this with the second equation, kind of put those two together. Uh, do you think these two equations will help us? Or here's another question that I want to raise before I get into this. Could we use the original system as is? Because we are given f of x in both equations. We could possibly, right? For example, I could take the top equation as is f of x plus f inverse equals 2x and then negate the second one that's going to give me minus f of f of x minus f of x remember the second equation contained f of f of x plus f of x and then that will be negative 2x minus 15 and then by adding these two equations you will probably get something helpful from here, you think? Maybe, maybe not. But these two are going to cancel out, leaving us with f inverse of x minus f of f of x equals negative 15. I could probably do it the other way around, which I think would look a little better. So we can go ahead and put this on the right hand side. f of f of x equals f inverse minus 15. Interesting. If you compose f with itself, then you'll be getting 15 less than the original problem. By the way, this is supposed to be a plus sign because I put the minus 15 on the left hand side. Okay, so that should be plus sign. Do you think this might help us? Possibly, but let's go ahead and do this. Since we have the f inverse, let's go ahead and replace x with f of x. And that's going to give us f of f of f of x. It's going to be like three level uh, composition. And this will become f inverse of f of x as before, plus 15. And as you know, this is equal to x. So we kind of got the f of f of f equals x plus 15. Do you think this is going to be helpful? Yes. If f is linear. If you do know that f is linear, then this should be helpful. Let's just assume that f is linear. It wasn't given in the original problem. I mean, not the Apmo problem, but I mean in this particular one. But suppose f is linear, then you can write f of x as mx plus b. Then f of f of x is just going to be m times f, which is mx plus b, plus b. Just apply that one more time. And this gives us m squared x plus mb plus b. This is f composition f. But we do need the three-way composition or three-level composition, so it needs to go a little deeper. In other words, we do need f of f of f of x, which is basically replaced x in f of x with f of f of x, which is going to give us m times the previous expression 
plus b. And you can definitely do this forever, and that's going to give you a geometric sequence, which is kind of like an interesting, or series rather. And that's going to have some interesting consequences. But our goal is not that. Our goal was by assuming that f is linear to get a solution. Okay? But again, that's an assumption. It wasn't given. Now, we do know that f of f of f of x, the three-way uh, composition, is x plus 15. So this is equal to x plus 15, right? That means the coefficient of x is supposed to be 15. But I don't know the coefficient of x. It's actually m cubed. Maybe I should write it here so I can kind of put them on the same line. m cubed x plus m squared b plus mb plus b equals x plus 15. Great. Now from here, m cubed appears to be 1, which means m is equal to 1. Nice. And then this whole expression is equal to 15 because that's a constant. But m is 1, so this is going to be b plus b plus b equals 15, which is 3b equals 15, and that means b is equal to 5. Awesome. I got the value of m and 5, and I'm looking for f of x, and f of x was written as mx plus b. Therefore, from here, f of x can be written as 1x plus 5. But again, if f is linear, this would be the case. What if we did not know that, right? Okay. By the way, uh, what I did here could also be used uh, with the first equation because remember in the first equation we do know that f plus f inverse is equal to 2x. So now you can go ahead and replace x with mx plus b. But the problem with this one is you're going to have two values or infinitely many values actually because depending on what you get from here. Oopsies, um, I wasn't supposed to do that. Okay, what is f inverse if f is equal to mx plus b? It should be x minus b over m. There's a shortcut which allows you to find the inverse real quick. You add these up and set, set it equal to 2x, you're going to have two variables. So they're going to be dependent. Make sense? So that's the main difference. Or you could probably directly assume that, okay, maybe I can just write f as x plus b because I do know that m needs to be 1. Make sense? Great. Because if m is equal to 2, then its inverse is going to have 1 half, and they're not going to add up to give you 2. Okay? So, you can start with that, and hopefully you'll arrive at something similar. So, b is supposed to be 5, but can you find it? That's a good question. Anyways, let's get back to the actual solution. So, after replacing x with f of x in the uh, second, I'm sorry, first equation, we got the following system. Let me refresh your memories. f of f of x plus x is equal to 2 f of x. And the second equation already given, f of f of x plus f of x is equal to 2x plus 15. So what can I do from here, right? So here's one thing I can do. I can actually take the second equation as is, or maybe I don't even need the line here. I can go ahead and use the second one as is and multiply the top equation by negative 1. That's going to give me negative f of f of x minus x equals negative 2 f of x. And I work with these two equations. And when I add these up, f of f of x is going to cancel out. We don't want that. Go away because that's confusing. Then we'll end up with f of x minus x equals 2x plus 15 minus 2 f of x. And if you bring the f of x over here, you're going to have that three times. And then bring the x over here. You're going to get 3x plus 15 after division by 3, you're going to get f of x equals x plus 5 as b4. This is kind of like solving for f of x without solving for f of x, and that sometimes happens with integrals too. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.